In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the idea of thermal decomposition. Now, what thermal decomposition is, is, well, if you imagine a substance is being heated, so heat, heat energy is being applied to that substance. Over time, what can happen to that substance is it will begin to break down. And that breaking down process is, is known as thermal decomposition since that breakdown was caused by heat. Now, these group two elements, which I've been talking about in the past few videos, form carbonates. And the carbonates would have gen the general formula. If I use M to represent the, the actual group two metal, it would have the general formula of MCO3. And so MCO3 would be the general formula. And what, what would happen is when this firmly decomposes, it will form two products. One of the products would be the MMO. So this is the oxide of that group two element. And the other product form is carbon dioxide. So CO2. Now, as you go down the period what tends to happen is the resistance to this thermal decomposition, so the resistance to being broken down by heat, increases. This means that more heat is going to be needed to break down the carbonates of those group 2 elements as you go down the period. Now the reasons for this I, I might make a video to explain, but this is the general trend. So thermal and, and this ability to resist heat. Um, to resist to resist the uh, um, decomposition due to applied heat is known as thermal stability. Thermal stability. That means that a substance is able to resist uh, the thermal heat applied and not break down because it's so stable. And um, yeah. So this would be the general reaction and it increases down the period. <clears throat> now, if I was to draw this reaction out with an actual group two element, so maybe strontium. So if you imagine SR CO2, no, not CO2, CO3. And that reacts off the heat has been applied. So heat, heat. Might, might just draw a little flame here. And so that reacts and this forms SRO and, and it also forms uh, CO2. So this is the reaction between um, the SRCO3 to form, well, well, between SOCO3 and heat, I guess, to form SRO and CO2. And if we now take this oxide, like I showed you in the last video, if we now take this oxide which has been formed and added to water, what happens is it forms that alkaline substance. So it would form, I mean, it would form the alkaline solution. So it would like, it basically have, you basically have a reaction of SRO. My pen seems to be acting strange. Let me pause it for a second. Okay, I'm paused. Um, so this SR, SR would react with H2O and it would be 2H2O. And that would form the, uh, the SRO would react with 2H2O. No, it would react with H2O. And that would form SR2+, plus, since it just dissociates when it forms that. So it would have the ions of this and it would form the OH-. And since we've got two hydrogens, two oxygens, we're going to have two OH minus and the charges balance in this equation. So yeah, this is the this is what happens if you now take that oxide and react it with water. So yeah, I hope you guys found this video helpful. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.